joint meeting, uh, at least at the beginning here uh, tonight. We uh, are very happy that we could all get together and, uh, and, and talk for the first time together. This is great. Um, and in so doing, we are going to have uh, Andy West, a member of the uh, Redevelopment Board, uh, make a presentation on uh, one of the visions uh, that uh, people have of uh, the Mill District, and Andy spent a lot of time on it. So I'm actually going to let Carol introduce a little bit here. I will mention one thing, which is Andy has put together um, some notes on the presentation. So uh, before you leave, make sure that you get them over there on the table, okay? So I just wanted to mention that before uh, any of us forget. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, I also would like to take just a couple minutes to do a quick uh, stand and say a few more, please. Can I start with Bob? Bob, your motion. Charlie? Charlie Blavis is co chair of Master Plan Project. Basic Committee and Conservation Commission. Hey, I'm Royer, Master Plan Committee and Open Space Committee. <laughs> Sherry Baer and Master Planning Committee. I'm David Gamble. I'm an architect and urban planner with the <coughs> consulting team working on the comprehensive plan. <coughs> I'm Brian Barber. I was on the uh, Millbrook Study Committee. I'm Christine. Laura Wiener for planning staff. Chris Kinski, Arlington Development Board, and liaison to the Master Plan Committee. Mike Kerr, I should have really introduced myself up there. Mike Kerr, uh, Redevelopment uh, Board. Ted Fields, uh, planning staff. Bruce Fitzsimmons, Arlington Redevelopment Board. Joey Glushko, Planning Department. Leslie Mayer, Open Space Committee, Park and Recreation Commission. Did I miss anyone? And Andy West, uh, ARB. Thank your pardon. I was going to introduce you. Andy West is with the respected architecture firm, Elka Smith, Friday, that you work all over the world. He's been a longtime member of the Redevelopment Board, and we're really pleased that he can present to all of us a presentation that he gave the Redevelopment Board recently, and we're so very interested in it that we asked him to present this to you. So we'll turn it over to you. Okay, great. I I can't believe these guys are letting me talk about this, but they usually, I'm a broken record, and they usually say, okay, enough of this, Andy, but now I, they actually invited you all here, and I feel really good about that. Thank you, Mike and ARB. But um, I think Carol mentioned in a little email that, and I always want to clarify this, because it's, you know, it's the Mill Brook, and it's the Mill District, and so forth. This, this is about the, um, it, it has to do with the Mill Brook Linear Park but it's about a bigger vision that we're going to talk about today. And the whole thing did start with this Millbrook Linear Park, which was a, Annie's a LaRoyer's crew on the, on the open space committee, a subcommittee, I guess it was, of the open. Yeah, and that's where it, it started in its more recent iteration, and it's a very old idea. This is not a particularly new idea, but some of us are kind of rediscovering, and I think that started happening quite a few years ago. And the open space, um, the uh, linear park uh, study came back in our, to our minds and to our efforts, and I know a bunch of the group here, Brian, Joey, and other parts of the planning, David, I did, yeah, really did an amazing job on this thing, and um, that's really um, was the starting idea we, we um, did this report, which I hope you all get, will get to see, which is really amazing. It, it takes the brook section by section by section and describes the condition of what it is. And the idea for the linear park, it, it, again, you may all know this, but it's, it's about a string of pieces of a park that are around the mill brook, brook that could be strung together and then become cohesive. They'll never happen all at once. There may be breaks, there may be other kinds of things, but it becomes a very powerful idea running the Mill Brook from all the way from the, uh, from the reservoir all the way down and out into Mystic Lake. But what I want to talk about today is kind of what came to light after we started talking about this. And we talked about it in our meetings even, and then we began to talk about it with, uh, with the ARB, and that's about 
the overall mill district, which you see here in the kind of highlighted area in the middle, in a zone between that a zone that's bounded by the by, by Massachusetts Avenue on the bottom. I wish I had a, I forgot to bring a little clicker thing, but I'll go up there if I have to. By uh, the bike path on the north side, and then by the and then it contains the brook. I'm going to show you this in a bunch of slides. But, oops, excuse me. That's okay. So Mass Ave, the bike path, the brook and the two key nodes that we all talk about, which are um, you know, Park Avenue, Arlington Heights, and, and uh, Arlington Center. So to, tonight, I want to talk about, and, and this is the right time. I know you guys are at the beginning, and you're talking about existing conditions. You're talking about assets and so forth. Well, we thought, that's why I think these guys are letting me talk tonight, because it's about a, a great asset, OK? And then the opportunities that can come with that asset. So if you go to the next slide, what I'm calling the asset, I'm calling it great bones, okay? Arlington's great bones. The brook, the bike path at Mass Ave border this area, which is literally at the center of our town. It's like the heart of our town. Um, I'm gonna talk about these a little individually. Running, running through Mass Ave is, of course, the Battle Road Scenic Byway. Key sites that are left in our town that are quite large, not necessarily ready for development, but you know that they're going to be there as time goes on. Um, and they're, they're the large, they tend to be the larger sites that are within our town that we, that we have. And then cross streets and neighborhoods, and this is where I need more walking tours with Andy and the crew, but it's an amazing area at the center of our town. And what's distinct about it, you'll see it as we go through this, is what crosses through it and what the opportunities are for moving through it perpendicularly, if that's a word. The next slide. So the brook, the bike, and Mass Ave, these great bones. So he, here it is, this, this incredible asset of the brook, which is, you'll see we have a lot of public space that's attached to it, or we have some public space that's attached to it, but it's an, an incredible opportunity for a central focus. <laughs> of the Mill District. And again, you're seeing it outlined in green. It's not a green park. It's just showing this as a highlight. The opposite of a, of a pastoral green park, uh, that brook has been the natural center of life of Arlington in its history from the point where, and, and this is where I probably need Richard Duffy, but it's the, you know, the name Arlington means swift running water, which is the brook. The, the, sorry, the name Monogamy. <laughs> with running water, but then all the industry grew up around it, and it was a real working area that established this mill district. Um, the bike path was, of course, the train, and now it's the most, and I don't have the, quite the number on it, but one of the most utilized, I think the most utilized public park or public way in the state, if not one of the larger ones in the country. There, it, Its use is incredible, and it's part of the trails to rails network that is now actually, uh, someone told me, a young fellow in my office that it's connected right from like Florida, you can go all the way to Maine or something like that, like the Appalachian Trail, but it's a very interesting and vital part of what people are thinking about in terms of sustainability and so forth. It's just a great asset to us. <laughs> and then the third, the third piece of it is Mass Ave, which is, you know, for all its gas stations and things that we see that we want to change and too many banks and all. Mass Ave is a to die for retail or commercial quarter. Okay, that's, you don't get any better than having residential coming up to a spine which runs continuously through and is fed by many, many communities, and connects to, to various important communities. It's, it's a very important thing. You ask anybody who's a retailer, or commercial, they say, where do you want to be? I want to be on Mass Ave, of course. Okay, so it's a developing thing, but it is in itself an incredible asset. So all of those three things form this heart that's right there in, in, in our midst. And, and what I want to talk about, a few other things about the bones. <coughs> and then I want to talk about the opportunities that, that really is part of a discussion here. It's not, it's not really um, conclusions, but on the next slide. So the, the scenic 
Battle Road Scenic Byway is is right here, right? So it's it's Mass Ave, and it goes excuse me, it goes way out, um, as most of you know, in both directions. But you kind of see what's going on here already. The imprint of this district just keeps kind of coming out. Um, what can happen? And we're going to talk about this in a minute. What can happen is this can be just one piece of a whole historical idea that has to do more, not only with you know the Revolutionary War and so forth, but with the mills. So the next one, and then the key sites. So this is our this is our zoning map, and just kind of the squint test tells you. I don't know. There's a lot of color in here. I don't know what all these colors are. I'm supposed to know. And Carol reminds me, but. Uh, purple is industrial, I think. Is yes. that right? Can you focus on Sites that we know about are, are you know, the Myrak site, which is not shown all the way here. I mean, here's the, um, <coughs> the office park. This is the area that extends, and then there's Colony Apartments, I think it's called, but the bike path is here. You see the brook run right through it. And as, as Annie and the group know, I mean, it's, it's it's kind of wild. Sometimes you get these channels that run right through, and sometimes it opens up. This is uh, this is Golds, and then the, the bike path is down on this side. I'm sorry, the, the brook is here, and the bike path is up here. And then there's a there's the uh, Arlington Coal Lumber site, which is an interesting site. Um, there's some land there, and then this was I think I put in Shuler Court, but I don't know what the status of that is. But those are. Those, that's part of an investigation that we're interested in. I know Joey and the planning group are looking at what, what's the status of all these sites. And then, you know, Brigham's was just developed, or Alta, it's right there. So next. And then this is really the cross streets and neighborhoods, which I'm putting in the category of the bones, because it's just an amazing thing. Um, each one of, many of these connections have this green bridge, the railroad bridge. And they form little mini neighborhoods or little districts. You know, this is like this our civic zone in here, which is a historic zone. There are little alleyways and Water Street and Court Street and all that facing the uh, kind of civic area. Then it moves into the high school, um, Grove, feeding into Dudley, feeding out to Gravel, which is an interesting connection we want to talk about a little bit later moving across and into the Myrak site and the historical area. Don't forget, I don't want to forget your neighborhood. <laughs> Rider and forest area kind of thing. And then it takes you right into uh, Schwamm Mill, into the uh, Gold's Gym area, Park Avenue's running through here, and then this site we kind of talked about that up into there. But the identity of all the little neighborhoods and the actual cross streets are a real kind of part of the, of the asset of this thing, which could become an opportunity. So those are all the kind of things we've already got this is right, right in front of us. So um, it really, I'm excited sometimes just to see what we, what we really have in the middle of it. Could this thing be, are the opportunities for this whole district if we kind of consider it because it's at the heart of Arlington, because it's bounded by these three great, or, or bounded by Mass Ave and the bike path and contains this potential fantastic park. What could the opportunities be? And then next one. Oh, another one on the cross streets. And this really needs to be done up right because the more you go into it, the more you see little mini neighborhoods and little areas that <coughs> really, you know, are are great. And distinctive, I would say. Like you know, it's completely, you know, that's the Myrak area, that's Schwamm, that's the Gold's Gym looking toward the Arlington Coal, that's the top of it. That's Gravel looking toward that potential intersection, which could be, you 
know, enliven this is Dudley connection with gravel, but there's a part of the park over there that's middle, and I didn't, I really wanted one of that civic area, but I didn't have that, so I just put that in, but that's right at the beginning of the, you know, down at the beginning of this whole trail. Next. So the opportunities could be for these kinds of things, for mixed use, open space itself, for the middle of Brooklyn Linear Park, bike path improvements, Mass Ave commercial revitalization, historical tourism, and sustainability. These are the things that might be actually making this, in terms of real benefit and real um, um, value. And I don't think this is to be, um, you know, <coughs> I think it's more about uncovering and rediscovering and not about changing. In fact, I, I want to talk a little bit about it. It's, it's the DNA of Arlington. That's right there. All, all of the kind of all of the things that are, are great about our town are in this area: the open space, the parks, the, the community, the, the you know the unusual um, the unusual things we have, the unusual uh, traits of Arlington, and all these things. So just to kind of go through these things a little bit, the next. You know, what's mixed use? Residential, office, medical, professional, light manufacturing. Like that's that North Bennett Street School down in the lower right. If we could have more, maybe that's in this category, but that's a pretty nice thing. There's uh, retail restaurants, obviously, health, wellness. Health and wellness is a really interesting aspect of Arlington and already in the middle district. That's where we're finding it. And then, you know, residential neighborhoods. But Mixed use is kind of a boring word and dry. It's not, it's, it's community and diversity. Mixed use is about combining the best things that makes us want to be in an area. So it's, it's not, you know, mixed use development just sounds so dry. I think it's about forming community as best as you possibly can by mixing some of this office, residential, educational uses, health uses. <coughs> so that's an opportunity for this whole area, particularly because of the key sites. Develop it or think about a process whereby we could protect it for the best possible uses that we can think of as a town. Um, open space, this is about the brook itself. And uh, this was this was actually, I think it was done by a graduate student or a GSD. At GSD. Recognized this, this amazing asset. And this report that she did has a lot of cool little ideas in it. And I think there's a lot of merit to the things she did, like a little restaurant that's next to the that's next to some channel. Whatever it whatever it is, there's just lots of little distinctive things you could do that are really Arlington based, not something you can make from outer space. These are things that have to do with us. Um, and these are just pictures of, you know, look at that street that's right next to, that's uh, Millbrook Drive, right, leading to the high school, and there's the brook running along. It's a beautiful street. My God, that's just, that's the bones. Imagine having something like that. And that's just a piece of it. And then this looks like you're in, I feel like you're going to be in New Hampshire or somewhere out there. So I do feel like it shouldn't be Jumping ahead a little bit, it shouldn't be like precious. This, the Millbrook Linear Park is not a, necessarily a very precious thing, and neither were the mills when they were done. I mean, they just they channelized them, they opened up, they changed things, they used them. So we should be using it too in our own new way. We shouldn't. I don't think we have to be. It's not about making a perfect, you know, uncover every piece of it and all that. Kind of, I don't think it's about that. It's finding those moments. You know, that's that bridge. If you come from Dudley. And you can go from Dudley right up to the bike path, but you're actually going between two buildings right now. It's probably illegal to walk there. It's private property, but then you go across. There's a big chain link fence up behind it. And you cross over here, and then you go out to the tennis courts that lead into, into Grove. And I think that could be thought about a little bit about how that whole recreational zone works. That's Arlington Public, part of our public land, park space. So I think this is important. Obviously, it can be the focal point we talked about, but a more relaxed alternative to the bike path. And um, 
I think a lot of people, I know, I, people are racing by at such high speed on that bike path. And to have a way to come off the bike path, circulate through a pocket park or even a beautiful cross street, see, understand your relationship to the brook, and then um, maybe go back to the bike path or out to Mass Ave. So another speed would be good to have um, for a public walking area uh, in addition to the bike path. The next one. And another opportunity is clearly bike path improvements. So, and this is an example of what we did. Uh, you know, the, uh, that's called the Alta development now, but it was rooms. And we're gonna, I have another slide on this later. Basically, as you develop or as new things happen in the mill district, part of their mission or part of their requirement can be to make improvements to the bike path. As we, as we got to do here, make connections through, generally the mission of the mill district can be to improve the bike path as well as mill growth. Next. And then mass Ave commercial revitalization. So this is, <coughs> this is kind of turning the idea of the neighborhoods and sub-districts into, wouldn't this be a way to help various nodes along, uh, along Mass Ave. Like for instance, this one is, is this as blurry to you as it is? Well, it's, it's, you can probably get the picture, but this is a view on gravel. And that's the AAA, um, you know, the grocery store, the lunch place. And there's this kind of um, gravel street, whatever it's called, it's like a little gravel square, gravel square thing. If you look at the opposite side, you can see one of the green bridges. And you can come off the bike path, and you can go into this. When you come off the bike path, you go by, so the bike path up here, <coughs> I come by, and this is a big, this is a little piece of public land in there. So this is this connection, right here. And there's a little piece of public land, part of the Millbrook Linear Park. It's really nice. And it's got a parking lot right next to it. And there's a brook running through it. And then it immediately then it goes underground at some point soon. But then the tiniest little house in Arlington is right there. That somebody owns that I met the other day. And so what are the how could you connect the bike path to Mass Ave so that you can say, okay, I want to go have a, a you know a great cup of coffee or breakfast or whatever, and then get back on the bike path. You could be aware of that as you are traveling along this bike path and there are places that you stop and you go down. You don't just stay on like an expressway. And then there's a reason to do that. As you come through, you understand what the mill district is about and you go and you get something to eat and you come back. So maybe it's a way to kind of create little mini nodes and, and really help, help, help the uh, commercial on, uh, on Mass Ave. Um, and then reinforce the special character of all these individual neighborhoods by and you know, letting them be what they want to be within all these cross streets, as well as the two ends. So uh, this is this is not any kind of commercial replacement for our major nodes, not not at all. It's a very different kind of lower scale development with little nodes along the way. I think. The next one, and then the opportunity for historical tourism. So again, not just. Uh, not just Baton Road, but the Mill District. Like, you got to come to Arlington. You got to come to that stretch of the bike path. Or you got to check this out because you really learn all about our early industrial uh, times, our, our history. Um, not just the Battle Road. You get all of that kind of stuff. So you you, you get the mills, and uh, it's amazing what this is. The high school that was covered over, Cutters Creek, I think, or Cutters Pond. And then all of these were peppered with mills, the last one still remaining, I guess. Um, so you get, the, you know, why can't we be a little bit better? And I know that this is something that the selectmen have been talking about quite a bit for quite a few years. Is how can we take our chunk of the history of, of the Revolutionary War, and which is very rich, and, and let that be an asset to Arlington, just maybe just in terms of bringing people in to see, see what we've got. Um, 
not the way Lexington does it, but maybe a kind of a gradient version would be a really cool thing to do. There's a road leading up to the middle. So multifaceted historical district. Like you gotta go there and you gotta get off and I got a great restaurant you need to go to when you're there. So then the next one. And then sustainability, which is, you know, it's this catch-all word in a certain way these days, but it means as much about community and diversity. Um, the way I know from uh, the master framers in the room will know that, you know, lead MD, lead neighborhood development, is now right in the, the basis of lead, which is analyzing how neighborhoods work and how cities work, how transit works, and so forth, how bicycles work, how bicycles pass and contribute, and so forth. And this seems like an opportunity for Arlington to be putting those things up front in a special district, which is this middle district. Uh, these, are, these are the types of guidelines that we certainly want townwide, and they're already coming into place. And it, it, whether we like it or not, they're coming into place. Our water quality is, you know, it's already in the codes. But wouldn't it be interesting to really see if we could stop the, they say the, the first inch of water in rainfall is the one that is the most, uh, it contributes the most to overflow and potential uh, hazards of mixing with sewer, which we've got on the, over on the Cambridge line. So all our codes now are trying to reduce runoff so that we reduce the, the, the load and the runoff into streams and brooks and lakes. So if we could make that part even more stringent or even more of a mission to have less permeable paving and so forth so that we could really think about helping the water quality of the brook, which is, by the way, feeding right into Mystic Lake, which feeds into the whole channel system. So this is not, this is a whole watershed issue. Um, you know, education just about as a lead point, for instance, as a sustainable point, just learning about energy use, about history, about all that is part of is part of sustainability. But I really would highlight this whole thing because, you know, if you can, and this is in the category of neighborhood development and health oriented development, which is I think, you know, I'm hearing a lot about it these days um, in, in my business. Um, uh, how people are tracking um, the health aspects of a community. And sometimes it just comes down to, you know, exercising, having parks, having, uh, but also having a mixed community. And that means kind of, we, we have an elderly community in, in Arlington. And why are we, I think for myself, I would rather not go out to some community, and this is just me speaking, I'd like to be in my own town and be able to be in the action. So kind of the mixing of old and young can happen um, as one of the goals of the sustainable idea. And a walkable area, so elderly people don't have to get run over the bike path by the skaters. They can, they can be part of this park network. Um, but mixing old and young and so forth, all in, as we develop this, I mean, it, it would be a very big, of sustainable mission that is part of our own town. It's part of what we, we probably want to do. So the next one, and then kind of this is, I think, toward the end. Finally, I put this in here because I, I kept worrying that you know everyone's looking at this and saying, "Oh, well, this detracts from from the two nodes." I don't think that's the idea at all. It's a very different kind of a of a zone. That's, that's not like Arlington Center or like Arlington Heights. It's not going to be the, <coughs> I don't think, very, very dense um, development in it has to be tuned very well to respect, to enhance Mass Ave, to respect and improve the brook, to help connection to the bike path, to you know, augment our public space. Um, it's a connector so that you could start to feel that wow, there's something, you know, there's a, there's a way to get from here to there. There's something happening in between this thing that's very, <coughs> that's very cool. And then the next one. Uh, these are maybe a little bit old, but uh, 
I know the planning department are working on things that we could look at. Obviously, land ownership. This is all the stuff that's part of the master plan, potentially. Uh, business community legacy projects is something I know we see in our business where somebody really wants to turn over a piece of land if it's used in a very community, you know, beneficial way. Um, student <coughs> urban design studies, I threw some of this stuff in. This is grants for TOD, health and, and bicycle and master planning. Maybe that could be possible if we can identify this as a very important district in our town. And uh, overlay mission, because at that time we were very hot on an overlay, and I know that the, that you guys are going to be, as, a, as the master planning group, we're going to be talking about various different devices that could be used. And then lastly, that's just a potential write-up of the zoning mission, which talks about you know improving the bike path, mixed use, and so forth, all the things I've been talking about. Next. And this is just showing, you know, this is not bad. Um, you know, maybe we wouldn't want this, wanted this to be quite so dense, but if you think about this as a whole, I'm talking about 22 Mill, the, the uh, Mill Drive. This is Mill Street. This is you know, the brook running through. It's called Alta. I don't know if this is a very old picture, but it may be a rendering from when they started. This is Shaggs, the bike path. But this contains a medical office building, retail, and they put retail here, which I wish was bigger, and residential. They improved the bike path. They, we insisted that they have this public way through, which is stairs and ramps, and connects, and they improved the pocket park, which is this one, which is right on the brook. It has some really cool little brook scapes in it right in here. And then eventually it ends up piping right under the high school. But, so they did some of the things that are potentially in the mission of the, of, of the potential mill district. It doesn't go all the way through. I would love to see a set of stairs that goes up to the back of our way and it goes through here. But you know, you come out here and you go like this. So they, they kind of got some of the ideas that could come out of a mixed use development, which includes health, um, residential, and retail. They did all those things to some extent, and I think that's the kind of thing that we could do better at um, and, and maybe have a, a say in, in this, in this you know, the kind of densities and so forth. I think one of the things that we always talk about in the ARB is our industrial or our, our, you know, our business uh, properties. We don't want to let that drop down to the point where if this just gets to be another big residential strip. That could be a real missed opportunity for this very distinctive part of Arlington. Um, and then the next one is just kind of summarizing, um, you know, I use these kind of buzzwords, but, you know, uncover, rediscover, enhance, and invent, like a new art inventiveness should be, be part of this, but it's also just finding what we've got. Um, I think that I mean, there's no surprise, uh, no coincidence that this is here. This is right where kind of, I think about it as a V-shape where the hill comes up and up on the other side, and this is where everything happened. Okay, the whole commerce and life of the of Arlington happened right there. Not just there, other parts, but this is such a distinctively uh, bordered area you know, that it seems like that could be rediscovered by us in a different way. And that, that's really the brief talk about the mill district. Um, I have a little a little flyover that I did in Google, which is kind of fun if you want to see it, if you have time. All right. You're really giving me way too much time, Mike. This is uncalled for. They made it sound like it was going to be much longer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. They, they cut me down. So this is for 
from Google that I'm looking at the whole district. So now you're looking down over Route 60. Spy um, car. The bike trail is a green line. This, this is the bike path. Yeah, the green line yeah, is the green. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, you sometimes see it. That's pretty much it. It works its way up the true park and then up into the cruiser park. channel to the right that, that I think I have a picture of here. That, yeah, that leads right down under there and into the high school, under the high school field. That's that bridge, tennis courts kind of in the distance. You see that town-owned land that could be just not much to fixed up. That's Dudley Street there. So that park is kind of to the left. So then you move on. Dudley to, I guess that is Brattles. And then you move into the whole Myrack and the, and the whole uh, middle zone. That's Brattles. The one I showed you before. Oh, that's what's up far. No, this is Brad. This is Brad. This, this is kind of a bit of a repeat. I took you to this point in the This is a little bit of a double up. That's that potential kind of node there. And then we go forward. And now you get into this whole Myrak area. And there's a very industrial. Some of the growth around here is really channelized, though, like it's in concrete channels. But maybe, maybe it stays that way in this area. You know, why it's should it? You know, but let's say you build residential or office around it, you incorporate something about the growth into it, um, even without uncovering. <coughs> Very 
That's the channel. That's it. Office building. Interesting businesses in there. The architect. There's that stack. This is a, not a great connection, but could be in that area. It's just kind of keeps its way out. So then moving north, this is the this is your neighborhood Annie, I think. But here there's a great place to come off the bike path. It kind of gets level here. And that's where the connection up to Schwamm is in the battle of over the rocks. Leading up into Schwamm Mill. Um, over the rocks. I think you know this is a very underwhelming. Part of our history, the you know, way it's, it's here. You know, I, I don't know. I think we could make something of the whole connection could be about the foot of the rocks and the strong rocks, rather than just kind of by the way you drive by it. And, and I don't think this necessarily has to be, you know, mega construction. It's, it could be signage. It could be just the way we uh, treat it. Then there, this 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 is right around the Schwamm Hill. Then it goes up, and it actually goes under a residential building, which is really kind of strange. It just ends, and then it crosses under, and then starts going along. It crosses. See that guy right there? It goes under that, crosses over here, and now it's over here. And now you're looking toward Arlington Coal, and this is a really a big opportunity here because you've got a big stretch of the road could be wide here. This is also a very underwhelming out to the bike path from the parking lot of goals. And this is kind of skipping a little far ahead as it's going up the way to the end. But I do think along the area of goals, we have a lot of opportunity for brook-related mm -hmm. development. That's it. That's it. Mike, you got off easy. Thank you very much. much. Mm -hmm. um, any questions or any, any other probings for Andy? I think it's I think it's spectacularly on sort of uh, I guess only mine. I mean, it's really for me for anybody that's been up and down that corridor, it has mad that us. You know what what is that? I, mean, I think I don't know exactly what it turns into or what the process is. I think there's lots of options, but. And there's obviously a ton of work to do that. But it strikes me that a sort of heritage corridor of some sort um, that doesn't compete with the bike trail, it doesn't compete with the mass app, it just reinforces them, um, and it creates a, a center. Um, and it's part of the sort of, um, I mean, as, when you look at the master plan for Arlington, it's about transformation in some extent. It's about what Arlington has been how you use that to get to where you want to go. And it's just it's the, the feeling, the sort of the thematic part of it is great. Um, and the, you know, the map of the, the mill, I mean, the, the book is there waiting to be uh, rediscovered. And I don't know whether there's some daylight you need to do over the, over the, the book. I think it's great. I think, I think there's a lot of um, um, branding that you've got to do to make it catch people. It's, it, it, it's, still, it, it's still not clear what is this place, why is it, what's different about what's inside that shape and what's outside the shape and explaining how it's different and why it's special uh, and what it might be. And so I think that's a, just, the op, just the sort of branding is a, is a big challenge, but I, I think it's, it's absolutely right. I think you're right about it. It's, it's, it's not an edge, the way it's shown here, you know, Mass Ave is an edge, but it's, it's not an edge. It's, it's, the, it's both sides of yeah. both. Yeah. And I think those connections through are, are really key, so that it's not an insulated thing in any way. But I agree, remember, with bridges. The bridges are like that. And I, I think the important part of the, and one of the reasons we ask both for this joint meeting as well as uh, to have Andy present is obviously you've heard lots of points of view, lots of uh, different uh, input along the way. And we actually felt uh, pretty strongly that it's nice to think of this, I'm gonna use the wrong word here because I'm not thinking about it in terms of zoning, but an overlay, right, of what, what, is, what is there. Um, that uh, 
the master plan might be a real nice time to reach out for exactly that. I mean, I think that's that's one of the thoughts, right? Is is boy, that's a part of the excuse. Start at least talking to people and, and uh, telling them about it. So, uh, or sharing sharing different thoughts about different places. So. Yeah, as as part of our study, our report that we did, we, we did look into the ownership patterns quite a bit and knew that that was ultimately going to become a big issue because it's it's really very mixed. I, mean, I think it's, if I remember, numbers may not be exact, but roughly 30 to 35 percent of the space along the road is town-owned, the various parks and um, town properties. And then there's a pretty big percent that's industrial or commercial business owners. But there's also a lot of small residential mm -hmm. uh, lots that back up to the brook in different places, certain certain areas, certain neighborhoods. So, you know, there are some areas that are going to be very difficult, you know, with small homeowners to, to make any access, you know, to work exactly in their backyards. Um, but that, those, are, those are pretty distinct. You know, discrete areas, and I think the you know, like you mentioned, with the Brigham's Alta and uh, potentially the Gold Spring areas, you know, there there are certain bigger areas that have other opportunities and potential that would be the focus primarily. I think, and then using the town properties like Reservoir Blue Field, Wellington Park, um, even the high school area, you know, where. To potentially jumpstart. So, yeah, to jumpstart yeah. to get you know get to <coughs> some of the pieces, some of the connections started to be made. Right, and I, I think I think that was a real great point that Andy made. We're not talking about a big bang here necessarily, right. right? We're talking about you know trying to influence decisions as they're made along that uh, along that <coughs> um, and uh, and sort of master plan is the perfect place to try to influence those uh, uh, those decisions as they're made. And I think that the book really kind of galvanizes it. Like people get it. That's why everybody says they don't understand that we're talking about a district, but they really get the book. Well, that, that's why I would, I would suggest that we could call it the Mill Brook District, not just the Mill District. I don't know if there's a reason right. for that. But, but because then the Brook, I mean, then it yeah. identifies yeah. a, a geographical, uh, you know, a dairy pardon? Mill Culver's.
was a piece, a chunk of the Charles River that was completely inaccessible. It was all industrial and a lot of abandoned uses there. And it, through zoning, they allowed change of use with a special permit and then sort of negotiated every time a property changed hands to just take a little piece of it and make, put a, a path in it. It felt stupid at the beginning because it felt like just disconnected pieces, but over that 10 years that I worked there, quite a bit of it came together. It was sort of like what the board did with mm -hmm. Mill, um, the Brigham's property making the connection to the, to the um, bike path from the high school. You know, they just asked for a little piece from every house to it. It's not the whole rail trail. Mm -hmm. The system's been built for the last 25, 30 years. They could keep finding little pieces and then they're connecting them together, but they had a vision. So this is like, you need to have a vision first to know where you want to head. So if the vision is put into the master plan and then we can keep checking away. Just want to comment on, on the presentation. It was, it was wonderful. Um, the, this district strikes me as a true mixed use district where you have industrial uses, office uses, residential uses, open space uses, all in one corridor. And there isn't any other place in Arlington that really has everything together. That's what makes it uh, so interesting and valuable, I believe. The graphic you showed with the Google, um, it would almost be interesting to do a before and after of the Brigham site where you can see the context and making those connections. And maybe that's something we as the committee have to talk about. We've talked about urban design. And I believe this area, more than any other part of Arlington, really needs an urban design uh, study. Because do you want more of what the Brigham site was in terms of a mixed use, making those connections of those large parcels? Um, and if we don't really study that, we're liable to end up with something that is not in the best interest of the town, doesn't preserve the brook, doesn't make it interesting. Um, the other thing, too, I think that needs to be studied are the connections to Summer Street. Yeah. You've got some major developments with the Sims Hospital site, and there are potential uh, development sites along Summer Street as well that need to be accessible to this district yeah. as well. I think Summer Street is something that we really need to look at, and Lowell Street as well, because that. That really is a border as well in the district. So. That's why you know, it's kind of, if you say specifically that you have to, that's why I think this book is kind of this galvanizing thing, because if you have to recognize the middle history and the book, Mass Ave and Light Ave, you have to, when you do a development, however small or big, you must contribute to this overall vision. Then, I think everybody wins. I mean, even, I mean, I can see some really defensive kinds of mixed use housing, industrial or light industrial <coughs> office that, oh my God, this is so much better than we thought we could ever do here. Because people know about it. You gotta go there instead of just, oh yeah, this is another development and it's, it's okay. It's not really adding to the community. I, I really think that, for instance, that the old and young aspect one of the things that we see a lot in, in uh, our development in our firm is uh, you know, we think about the, the developers are thinking about our children, you know, like my daughters are just coming out of college and they're seeing where are they going to, they're going to go into the workforce, where are they going to live, another, whatever it is, maybe they have children in five years, where do they want to live? Those people are trending toward wanting to be near transit. They want to be in a community feeling where there's exercise. Definitely a lot of exercise, right? They're all already mm -hmm. used to jogging and all sorts of stuff. They want a sense of community, we think, out here. You know, that this is what they want. <coughs> so they want access to the city, but they want, you know, these are kind of like all things about Arlington already. But this area could be where we could help that come along so that you have seniors and young people and all kind of I think that would be the biggest sustainable thing that I, I could imagine as, as that could come out of this. And again, that's not like Arlington Center or, or you know, Arlington Heights. I think Arlington Center is a whole other meeting we could have a different. Sure. This is a different kind of mixed use. It's a, it's a small
smaller scale and they're very different. And yeah, I think I think that the <clears throat> need to um, sell this for hate to use a term like that, but to the community, to the landowners, to you know, to the constituents <coughs> is gonna be a product, you know, the success of it will be a product of how well you communicate your analysis of this piece of property, why it's different, um, and how and, the, and how that turns into a vision, even if it's preliminary, even if you force yourself to get out kind of in front of the actual process with the vision, I think it's the vision that has to capture people. When you use the term, for instance, district, that doesn't resonate for me. For me, this is, there's actually three linear, and I love the DNA though, that these are really three linear strands of DNA. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. Mass Ave, it's what was a rail line, which of course was the formative element here in the, in the old days, as was the water. They're, they're, and they're, they're, you know, they're sort of flowing along next to each other in such a evocative way there that I think that, that there's like, it's imageable, just that it's imageable. And that's the heritage of, of, of Arlington, and that's the, the rail and, and, the, and the, the mills. Um, and so the idea of it being a district, I think, is wrong. I think it's something more connected to the district. It should, it should the, the words you use should imply that it's, um, mm -hmm. I can't I've been sitting here trying to think of the right word, but I can't. Yeah, district corridor. Uh, yeah, corridor, it's, it's like an organic, it's almost like that. It's a heart, in a way, or it's a, a spine. I don't know, spine. I didn't come up with the right word, but, but I think that, um, to get people excited, you have to really say this is a special area because, and explain why, and, and there are real reasons. I mean, it's not just that you have to look for them, the reasons are right there. Um, and then kind of push the vision a little bit harder, not just like it could be this or it could be this, but we think it's, and I'm just making it up, we think it's an Arlington Heritage Charter and it's, you know, going to be, has these opportunities. and just. Just get out ahead of the process with, with the vision. And the vision will evolve anyway, but it'll be something that hooks people. Because um, I, I, I think um, it's like you found something that everybody passes every day and didn't quite know was there. You know? That was what I think was Bruce was saying. It's like the, the high line. Yes, yeah, mm. it's mm. not physically like the high line, but it was this undiscovered thing that was right there. Right in front of all of them.
in selling it because that's another function of a master plan. Absolutely. So you've got to convince people that, that uh, this is what's right for the town. Uh, it's essentially a local facility. Uh, yes. And as opposed to the bike path, which is essentially a regional facility. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, and, and, uh, and, and, but combined with the bike path, it presents all these opportunities for, for walking loops and, and uh, uh, connections to businesses and, and whatever. But uh, people love to hear in a master plan that this is something for the Just time. Just yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I think that's great. We're willing to support that. Yeah. A little, a little bit better. Uh, and <clears throat> one of the, the uh, points that I brought up on the, on the uh, you know, committee was that uh, uh, as a model, uh, as a general model, you might look to Town Brook in Plymouth. Uh, it's similar length, similar water volume, uh, goes right through the center of, of Plymouth. And uh, it's been very, very nicely developed. They have the opportunity there to do a nature trail along most of it. And you don't have that here. Uh, parts of it you do, but uh, uh, it's, it, if people want to see something that's built, you know, on the ground, uh, some, some uh, and, and there may be other examples. The town Brook in Plymouth, and it contributes to their to their tourism, which is quite important in Plymouth.
just a, an interesting point is the woman, I can't think of her name, Mia Lara, Mia Lara, that wrote the, the report in 1976. She's become a, she's a landscape architect and urban planner, and she is um, most recently was working on the Los Angeles River, which some of you in the urban planning may know is a major, major project in Los Angeles to the daylight and clean up that river. And, so she's taken this concept that she started in Arlington as a graduate student at the GST, and you know, now she's cleaning up Los Angeles. <laughs> she's done no she's done she's done she's done she's done she's not the exactly same yeah. scale, but, but it's an interesting um, <laughs> point that you know, maybe other things we could look at in other examples like Plymouth and Santa Fe, and there's lots of different towns and cities that have taken advantage of groups through there but I have to I have to push back on it a little bit. I love the Brook idea. I mean, certainly think it's fabulous. But I think that between the, the old rail line and between that between that and Mass Ave is an area that is I think you said it. It kind of captures the old culture of Arlington, the scale of it, the kind of uses. The fact that it hasn't become precious. The fact I love the idea of back doors. I, one of the one of the things I love about the bike trail is riding along back doors. I just love that. I think it's, it's so much more interesting than riding along the front doors. And it, this is a kind of a back door district. It, it's like it's like lifting up the hood and seeing what, what this place is actually about. So I, I think a lot of the uses and the way that they could transform into maybe cultural uses or historic, you know, heritage kind of places. Um, is every bit as important, and in fact, if you ignore them, you won't be successful. As as the, the I'm from Philadelphia, we call it a creek in Philadelphia, um, a creek. Um, but you know, I, I think it, it, I think they're they're just both important. The, 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 the water element is, is critical, but but I think if you just focus on that and don't see the you know the, the, the nature of this district, the open space is incredible, the bike trail is incredible, and even the backs of Mass Ave are just so it's interesting to see those backs and I don't know. <coughs> I think it's a unique place in the town in a lot of ways beyond just the, 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 the sounds like a lot to think about and a lot to talk about, which is nice. <coughs> That was the idea. So thank you very much for coming here. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you might you're welcome to stay for a moment for the master plan update, which is the next agenda item, but you've been here a while, so also feel free to stretch your legs and take off now if you want. Um, so we're going to just jump right into that. Sure. Okay. I'm going to pass around a timeline of reports and key dates that are coming up. Um, as I do, I'll describe. Um, the next six months are going to be very intense activity for the Master Plan Advisory Committee. The um, consulting team has prepared baseline reports. Uh, the comment period for those baseline reports closes this Friday. Then a series of working papers starts to come out. You see the columns, uh, the dates on the left. Um, each month, starting December 30th, we'll get a working paper. This is where issues will be identified in each of the master plan elements. A presentation will be made on the working paper at the Master Plan Advisory Committee meeting. The comment period will open and the staff will uh, provide information to the public on how they can comment on the working papers. Uh, each month there will be a deadline, so the comment period will be open for about 30 days. And that goes all the way through May. I'm not quite sure where the historic resources working paper is, but you should be assured that it will be in, in this schedule. In June, there will be a visual preference survey, and this kind of ties into the um, comments about 
the need to have some type of urban design exercise or urban design guidelines um, in the master plan. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think that'll be a very interesting um, process. The exact way in which we're going to get public input on the visual preference surveys is yet to be determined, but uh, that's in June. And then in July, the committee will work really hard to consolidate all of the comments received on the work of the papers. Uh, the committee will have to make some decisions and show some leadership and make some choices, and there won't necessarily be agreement across the board, even with the committee. But this is the, that's when the, the real hard work of the committee will start. So the paper, the master plan will then be um, written based on those recommendations. It, it, it's expected to be done at the end of 2014 and then uh, going to the redevelopment board for approval and the town, to town meeting 2015 for endorsement. Do you have any questions on the handout? Any questions on the master plan? back into order here. Um, the next item on the agenda, uh, first off, Andy, thank you very much. Oh, it was a great yes. presentation. Uh, really appreciate it. And I think most importantly, it got, it got people thinking a lot, which is nice. So uh, it, next uh, on our agenda is uh, Arlington 360 uh, update and some other uh, goings on. Um, the first thing I'd like to mention on that is uh, you should have received um, a um, matrix um, that Fully HOAC um, helped create with um, LDA and special permit requirements. Uh, so with respect to that matrix, thought process is, is uh, staff will uh, take the matrix and start to uh, move through it and uh, um, check off boxes as they determine uh, things have been uh, delivered um, and done. So, um, you know, if anyone's got any comments, I'm happy to talk about it. Uh, I don't think that the notion wasn't to go through that matrix tonight uh, on any particular level. Uh, I think what we will do is we've got a meeting, I think tentatively scheduled for January 6th. Yes. Um, and at that meeting, actually, is probably going to be a couple things uh, that are important to mention. One is, is hopefully we'll be in a position to um, start going through this in a more meaningful way, uh, as far as the matrix of uh, requirements on both the LDA and the uh, special permit. Um, so that's the first thing on uh, on Arlington 360. A different topic uh, for that January 6th meeting is that um, I would expect us to be discussing uh, warrant articles uh, for the uh, medical marijuana um, treatment centers, if I've got that definition correct, um, and um, uh, possibly a warrant article with respect to um, zoning and use, and the other one would be with respect to um, possibly signage uh, for such dispensaries. Um, the thing I'd like to point out is this is for the warrant article, so it's it's the usually very broad, um, topical, um, uh, two sentence uh, article that goes into the warrant itself, not the recommendation of the board or any of the different regs uh, or zoning bylaws that we would expect uh, to be going through. Um, we want to make sure that whatever the warrant article is, we want to discuss it, make sure. But I think that the notion is is that, and I think it's the right one, is is the redevelopment board should be um, putting those warrant articles into the warrant this year. Mm -hmm. So, 
as they have to do with zoning, uh, they, they should uh, come from us. So, so I would expect that to happen at the January 6th meeting as well. So, um, I'm not sure if we've got anything else right now. Do we have a list of the articles, or are we just going to talk about what? Yeah, no, we'll have, we'll have some uh, draft language uh, for articles that we can discuss. Okay. So, but literally, it's it's that you know the gray book that comes out with yeah, just yeah. the two sentences. That's that's what we're talking okay. about for that one, not the recommendations themselves. Okay. So, I have a question on each of these. Um, yeah. First, with the Arlington three hundred and sixty, the matrices. Yes. Um, you had sent out three attachments, um, and two of them look um, very very similar. They were not, exact. They were exactly the same. One was the spreadsheet, one was yes, the Yes, I'm yeah. sorry, I, I should have explained that better. Yeah, yeah. They, they were the same. One was if you wanted to manipulate something. Okay. So that I sent out the PDFs for easier. Um, okay. For, yeah, in fact, so on the spreadsheet, it's two workbooks in the same spreadsheet. There's okay. two tabs at the bottom, just oh. go back and forth okay. uh, between the two. I apologize, you know, I should have I meant to put that. Um, as you know, I just wanted to send the email out, no comment, no anything else. Right, Unfortunately, right. what that tends to do is I don't end up explaining exactly what I'm sending out. So, um, so with respect to that, um, if you go into the spreadsheet, the notion there was if you'd like to manipulate itself, uh, manipulate you the, go, right go in, the right in it. The PDF was just easier for everyone to print. Okay. So I did a PDF of each of them just so you okay. can print it. In fact, if you've got any comments on the matrix or any of the matrices, um, please get them over to Carol, um, okay. and uh, we'll have her collect uh, comments and, and make sure that they make it into staffs um, uh, as, as staff goes through uh, the different uh, requirements uh, that they take into consideration uh, all the different uh, comments that come back. That's that's appropriate, I think, right? Yes, okay. I do have a question on the matrix. Yes, please. When you're done. Oh, my other question was on the Warren article, yeah. and um, last year we had a Warren article on medical marijuana dispensaries that yes. uh, was not acted on because of a moratorium. moratorium. So, has Carol, do you know if there's been any further uh, thought by the sort of the group that had, had been yes, adding this morning? Yeah. yeah, we actually met this morning. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, and I think, you know, people are, are thinking about it. I think we've got a timeline that 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 doing the Warren articles on the sixth would help mm -hmm. that group move forward and make some of the recommendations that they probably want to want to make along the way. So okay. good. So I just had a question, and when I'm looking at this matrix, just yes. so I understand how the timing part works. Yeah. So on the timing, that's, I, yeah, all these yeah, I would problems. not, I would not spend a lot of time on the timing. That was more of a note for staff as they're going through, as as far as what you know, Foley maybe may have considered being the timing of, of certain things. So just for what the columns mean, status is what status something is where it is right now, and is substantial completion where it needs to yes. be. Yes, <laughs> yes. So the timing, of the two columns on the right, that's substantial completion and final CEO. Yeah. Might be sure of the difference between the two. So, so there's some conversation that still need to go on with Hope Foley and that type of thing. Okay. But, but I think the the important part is, is status is is for the most part blank. There's a few notes in there just as reminders uh, for both staff and us as far as maybe things that have happened along the way. But it's really where we would expect staff with you know, and, and I'm sure Carol's going to pull maybe members of this board into those discussions as far as you know certainly. Um, the different landscape and everything else that you've been involved with. I'm sure Carol's going to want to hear from from you as far as, okay, has this been done? Has this been done? And that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Laura's going to be hugely involved with all of the um, traffic mitigation. Um, so, and, and all those types of things. So, so, so we'll be calling on, on different folks for help with these different things. The status is, is more of just a block for, for them to keep notes as to, as to where we're at. You know, I'd like to, I'd like every single one to have a complete next to it in the status column. So it doesn't necessarily need, like, say, for the first item, all in, all utilities shall be underground because there's an X in substantial completion and in final CO. What is what are those X's? Mean? That's supposed to mean that they should be done for those times. So it should be done for substantial completion and, and for, for final CO. For final CO, certificate yeah. of occupancy. Right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if there's an X in only one of those. It, it, that yeah, really, only and needed to be done for substantial completion. You and I'll be honest that. with you, I, there, there was another column called TCO in there. There was, a, but, but we did away yeah. with that. So, so I wouldn't pay a lot of attention to the X's right now. 
In fact, you may see those two, two columns disappear because, frankly, everything needs to be done for when we talk. <laughs> so the columns are a little bit meaningless, other than those things that aren't, and then we better discuss when they need to be done. When we talk, we're going to be talking about final CO, right? Yeah, I think that's what they're going to be doing. Not temporary for. anymore, no, not no. substantial complete. I mean, they're no. substantially complete. No, we're talking about the, stuff, we're, yeah, we're talking about the completion of the project okay. is where we're getting to. Right, okay. and I mean, so, so where we're left, I mean, where the, where it gets a little, you know, um, there are different things that are owed at the end of the residential and at the end of the assisted living, right? I mean, so there's this kind of in between because we've broken the project into two pieces now. There's a, it, there isn't that fine delineation that there was before, mm. as far as some of those things are concerned. So, so it's really about. So if, if there is some kind of, you know. Like I said, don't pay too much attention to the X's. Mm -hmm. I think the more important part is, is is the inventory is there. We can go through, figure out what has been done, and for those things that haven't been done, is it because of the assisted living? Is it because of, you know, and therefore it stays open until that's done? Is it because of you know this, that, or the other thing? I think I think those are the ones we have the discussion about, and that we're comfortable with where we are at that time, regardless of whether you know it's done or not done. That makes some sense. Mm -hmm. so. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. No thanks. So, so that's the update with respect to the matrix. Uh, went a little off topic on the uh, um, January sixth, but it just kind of came up at that point. Um, the other things that have happened up at the park, and Christine, you've been involved more than I have, but I've, I've seen the, 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 the traffic a little bit. Is um, there's been a lot of discussions about parking mm -hmm. still, uh, parking around the. Uh, the parks, um, and um, there has been, um, and maybe I'll let I'll let Carol and Christine talk about it. But with respect to the MBTA bus mm -hmm. and the stop um, for the MBTA bus and all the requirements that go into that on that site because of the slope, mm -hmm. and because of you know the ADA requirements and everything else. That yeah, Laura. Do, I think Laura worked on it for yes. the staff. She was working with. The MBTA probably over the last year trying yeah. to get the bus stop to come there, right? To resume it's service. Very to resume important service. To get that bus so they they had a, a plan that they were sending around by email just recently about all the different locations that they looked at. Potential. Mm -hmm. Potential locations for the bus stop. And none of them actually met MBTA's requirements for slope because mm -hmm. of where we are and everything else. Some of them were better than others as far as public accessibility. Some of them were in the way of some of the private entrances, so they weren't good necessarily, not maybe a good combination. So the, the site that they ended up picking that the MBTA was amenable to was right in front of the park. Upper Vista Park. The Upper, upper Vista, Vista Park. Vista. So if you remember where the parking is at the Upper Vista Park, yep, yep. and this is the road right here. Yeah. I just brought this in case we wanted to talk about it. This is the Vista Circle part up here. Yep. Mm -hmm. So what ended up happening, this is where the curb line was. They've expanded a little bit here so that they could have another accessible space here. And this is now paving. It has to be a certain length for the bus to stop. The bus needs 40 feet. So this ended up being um, 37 feet long right here. How does the bus get in? Just a, it's, just on the, it's just on the road. It, so it's just oh, stopping oh, on the road. This is, this is sidewalk. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, it's not a, yeah. So it, when can, I first looked yeah. at it, I thought it was a pullover also, but it's, mm -hmm. it's not a pullover actually, it's a sidewalk. Okay. So what it did was it, it took a little bit of encroached. space out of the park. Mm -hmm. It encroached a little bit on the park, a little bit on the conservation mm -hmm. area. But it's a public benefit, it's a public asset. Definitely. And it's a good spot for the bus. There's, I mean, there's no about neighborhood resistance. It's actually neighborhood supported that yeah. it be there. And tell me if I'm no, it's speaking out of turn on anything. It was felt by most of us that it makes the most sense because another location would have been much too private and farther mm -hmm. from the um, assisted Public living where yeah. some people are going to be coming to work mm -hmm. and coming on the MBTA bus to work. This also, having it closer to the two parks, reinforces that the parks are public. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so that's nice. It's unfortunate that it has to be, uh, that it's located um, within the boundary of the CR, but I think it's better in many respects to um, then to draw the line to exclude the bus stop from the CR. I think 
I it's good to have it in there. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah it's good to have it in reasons, there. For reasons, um, it's preferable to have it within the CR. There, it adds a little bit of confusion, I guess, to the CR, but not really. It, some some parts need to be rewritten. Brian Merrick, I think, is yeah, I think it's working. Is no. working really hard. His alert that. system went up because he said, "Oh, this is going to change parts right. of the CR." Not that it was bad, but to, that it's another change. Yes, changes later. To have green pervious surface removed. But it's a small area, and the benefit that it's providing yes. is so great, Absolutely. and it needs to be somewhere. And this is a good spot. So, yeah, yeah looking at all the other locations. <coughs> if you're going to the assisted living, you have to go walk down. Yes, yes. you do. And so then you have for to the walk the back up to get the bus. But no matter where you are, you're going to have you to walk, walk down to summer. summer. You can actually walk down to summer to get the bus. That's okay. where the bus so would also good. stop. Yeah. So we could leave you off here, and you can walk down. And then you can walk downhill to get it. You can yeah, walk downhill if you don't ways. want to walk uphill. Exactly. Right. I believe that's right. That sounds right. Because this is um, this is a one-way service, which I always find a little oh, hard really? to understand. But oh, going um, or you north? can't get on and loop back. It's only you only get off. You only get off. Yeah. Right. And so the on is down on Summer Street. And yes, yes. which is okay because it's downhill. I mean, it's far preferable to having to walk uphill to get your oh, bus. Oh, so you right. can't get on the bus here. Yeah, you can only get off. You really? It's a destination. I know, it's yeah. odd, isn't it? I, I, and I why do they do it that way? Uh, the MBTA did it because of past practice with their ridership counts. Okay. Um, but aren't people going to But isn't that a in the morning? So if the ridership <laughs> counts change, will they change? Yeah, yeah. You know, it may be ridership well, counts, yeah. um, but it might have been based on the prior day. use or the route itself. I think that they will consider the new use, but over time. Yeah. And then possibly. The I mean, you're talking about, a, 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 yeah, it's just surprising. I mean, I can see where a hospital would only be drop off. <laughs> it you is know? demand driven usually. So, you know, whether you get a bench is demand driven, yeah, trash yeah, is demand yeah. driven, every part of it. Oh, that's yeah. Just have people start. I can imagine, you know, yeah. 30 or 40 people going and riding to work and going to get the bus there. Mm -hmm. What route does the bus take? Does it go all the way through the circle? It's the Tricky Hill bus. No, but well, no, well, I think it does go all the way around. Yeah. To, to it reach does go the around the whole circle. Site. So it goes through the whole circle yeah. of the whole development. Yes. But it doesn't stop anywhere else. Right. It only stops here. Yeah. And then so it circles people around. will see it. Where's it going to go? Where does it end up? Where, what's its route from where to where? I don't know. I, I honestly can't tell you uh, I exactly. Is it the 67? I don't want to mislead you. I can't. Yeah, I, I don't guess. know. Either. No, I don't think it's well. Is that tricky? No. Is I don't know. I, I saw somewhere, somewhere that it was it the 67 bus. So if it is, you can look up the schedule. Okay. Do you really want to know? I can get I can get information on what route it is. What route number and where, whether it goes to LY. Hmm. Just curious. I don't know which one would be that. So that was one thing that's kind of, they're, they're pouring concrete if they haven't already. Yeah, I think they may have already done Yeah, they had to do something before December 31st. Mm -hmm. There was a deadline. Otherwise, oh, yeah, the MBTA was going to come here. They're pouring this concrete. So I don't, I don't know if they were able to do it. Maybe because it's weather dependent on that extension. Hopefully. What was your question? Um, they pouring this concrete? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm probably putting a sign in. Right. Somewhere. And there's going to be a bike rack here, too. Right. Good. That's, that's a bus stop over here. It is. Be a nice place to wait for your bus. There may be more oh, landscaping yeah. that we can well, she said she add in the spring, too. To <laughs> but I was thinking, yeah. I'd just go you there. Keep like. a <laughs> yeah, wow. It depends if. <laughs> just, just keep getting dropped off. <laughs> Sleep out. I think you can keep it. Keep getting dropped off. Yeah, it was another tough day at work. You won't wait there because well, the bus is going to be That's right. That's right. It'll come. It just won't let you on. They want you to be back with a Miss the bus again. <laughs> I, th I think if we yeah, miss it again, we can, okay. guy keeps going by me. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna look at some landscaping in the spring to enhancements because you're so close here, mm -hmm. and also maybe to still keep a tree here. If you're walking backwards, you might get in. 
Yeah, to the, yeah, yeah bus. to the bus. He's still trying to figure out how to get on the bus on instead the bus. of just getting drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot something. Just go ahead. You know, I forgot something. <laughs> We thought the important thing was to resume service with what oh, yes. we could. Oh, yeah. you got to get the foot in the door. You have yeah. to get the foot in the door. door. No, yeah, yeah, but that's good. Exactly. Anne goes up there every morning. Exactly. Back on How about now? Can I get in now? How about now? Can I get in now? Get off. What if you don't get off? Oh, can I get in now? <laughs> then you stay on and you're off. Uh, we, are still, we are still talking about parking up, uh, up near the Upper Vista Park as well. I'll give you a little bit of an update on that. There's. There's been some toing and froing because there's there's a need for affordable housing parking as well as park parking. So we've been kind of going back and forth on some of these things. So as far as what's in the CR, what isn't in the CR. So it's not just what's affordable. That? It's just the regular parking for the. Union. Well, yes and no. I mean, affordable housing has its own state. has its own okay. has its okay. own parking spot that we wanted to make sure that they had a parking spot, whereas the the market rates don't necessarily. I see. Okay. So. In doing so, it's taken up some of the, the surface part. Okay. We never designated the number of spaces, did we? It's we getting did. there. It's getting there. I mean, did we at some point in oh, the past say no, that I don't think we did. this park gets seven spaces, ten no. spaces? I didn't think we had no, either. No, we had. We had. The, the uh, lower is the lower. Yeah, the lower is all public. But this, not, not this. Yeah, we did that. we never said. Although the spaces were all in Within the, the CR. CR. So we're just kind of trying to figure out. And there were 10 there originally. Yeah, right? there's a few more than 10, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, I think there's a few more than 10. Yeah, so right now there are um, five public and two what you call floaters. Although, if you think about it, because parks go from sun up to sundown, mm -hmm. they're all kind of floaters because overnight, I assume, you know, I don't know what would happen there, but anyway. Um, but five are specifically for the Upper Vista Park, and two would be during the park's hours, Vista Park, and otherwise it would be uh, Visitor. Visitor Park, yeah. So, yeah. so that's, that's what, there's still some discussions going on in that, but that's, that's where that's so, coming up. So the visitors wouldn't be able to park there during the day? Correct. That's just for dust to dawn type stuff. Exactly. Uh, that's all I had on Arlington 360, Carol. Anything else? No, that's plenty. Yeah, that is plenty. Uh, there's and I all of those. There's a lot of phone calls. <laughs> yeah. I know they're, they're still working on the, uh, so. on, the, uh, on the on the on the CR, CR. Yeah. to get the boundary down versus working on something with the boundary and it's moving along. And on the documents, it's moving along. Okay. The Concom has Did it right now for comment. Not the document itself, but the is fully moving um, along okay. the marketing trailer site. Some of the right. final things we wanted there. Right. Um, so and to make sure that's their included. comments this week, and we can finalize that with the shelter. Jump. And what that's with also, shelter. Okay, that's with shelter. Yeah, that's been going back and forth to catch up with shelter. Okay, good. So just to I mean, see different things that they wanted. <coughs> on paper. But Foley's been. Our, our lawyers have been responsible on that stuff. I haven't been working with our lawyers. Okay, I, I think, think Brian um, has. Jake and Brian and. Yep. So might be working directly okay. with them and with the agency. The agency. It's doing no, I know. I've, I've, I've seen emails with Brian. So yeah. Okay. E E A. E E A. E A O. Yes, E E A. E E A. Chris has been talking with E E A. Okay. And yeah, it seems that they're gonna get away from some of their formatting issues. I yes. Think they were having formatting issues, which yes. wasn't helping. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. So trying to get I a little think bit more substantive. I think we're trying to get a little bit more substantive with it. So, um, so I think that's all we've got on Arlington 360. So, so please go through the matrix. If you've yep. got any matrices, um, if you've got any comments, or if you you know want to weigh in on any of them, please just get your comments back to Carol. We'll pass all of them through. Um, and uh, and also, if you feel strongly about anything, done, not done, anything that you feel you should you want to weigh in on early rather than at that time, please also contact Carol. Okay. Uh, she'll be the keeper. Or Laura. Um, I will be nearby, but on vacation starting tomorrow. Nice. Uh, all right. Great. So I will take your comments on the matrices, but just want to let the board know that I'll be not in the office. In, 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 Theory. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, maybe, maybe that's a good segue over to the uh, schedule.
because, um, you know, what can I do? Did I, did I miss one? The next uh, one. Did you get that one? Was it on the... Uh, no. The one Carol sent. Carol sent. Yeah. Do you have another one? I'll look on the comic pop first. Okay. I don't know. So we, we're trying to not meet the same nights in support of select. We've tried this in years past. It's not that easy. But uh, they are... They have their schedule set through um, April. And it's typically the second and fourth Monday, I think. Anyway, this schedule attempts to, to be the opposite. So you see that there are some months that don't, where I can find meetings. Um, April is hard. It's town meeting. We're going to have to meet. But that one, we're going to have to kind of wing it. We're going to have to see when. Uh, when the board needs to meet for statutory purposes and when uh, we can work around the board of selectmen's mm -hmm. meetings. If you, I know we haven't always in Arlington had a redevelopment board schedule prepared for, a, for the year, but I think it's best for your schedules, for your work schedules and your family schedules to be able to plan ahead. So if you look at April and you, you think there is something we should try to avoid, uh, let me know. But. August, September, and October are also tough. I do think the most painful one isn't even April, but January, um, because because I'm I'm a little concerned that, and this was what I was going to bring up on this with the holidays, with everything else, and with how busy staff is. I wonder whether the sixth is too soon to me to meet to talk about the major matrices and to be able to go through them. So. That might be the only one where, and, and, and the other problem we have is, I think the 20th would be a great day. It's, it's Martin Luther King Day. Luther, it's Martin Luther King day. Yeah. So I'd like so. you to add a date, it's 27th. Yeah, because folks, yeah, the 27th would be the one to add. Um, That's the day the warrant closes though, so. Yeah, so we need, to, we need to meet beforehand because of the notion of getting the warrant articles in there. So we might keep the six, because the 13th is the selectman, right? And so with our new policy. Yeah. Why, why did we not meet with the select committee? Well, because it's difficult with Carol kind of going well, back and forth and yeah. jumping, or as well as... Or something that the board yes. selectman wants to hear that the redevelopment yeah. board is doing. Right. Mm -hmm. Or vice versa. Okay. Uh, there are philo there's some philosophy that says you, you do want to meet on the same nights for different reasons, but we've, tr we've been doing that, and I just think it would be advantageous for both boards to be able to have the liberty and freedom to be a little more in tune with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean well, you know, why don't we do this? Can we do this? Can we plan for a meeting on the sixth and a meeting on the thirteenth? And as we get closer, maybe we can choose between the two? Just so right. people's schedules are okay. I, I I wouldn't say do both. And mm -hmm. the twenty seventh? Thirteenth. No, let's hold off on the 27th, and if we think we need to on the 13th, then maybe we schedule that one. So we still only have two meetings in January? Six right, and the 13th. and the 13th. I got a feeling the 13th is going to be a better day. I just, I get concerned. I mean, only because I know the way it is <laughs> through, through both right. year-end business, number one, and number two is, you know, the thirteenth just feels right. That's the, that's the I think that's the problem I'm having. And I know under policy is not to do it the same night, but it's just difficult with the Monday holiday. Well, I mean, it, I mean, like the new policy is, is maybe commendable, not perfect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's like, you know, but it, it, it's the it's the goal. Yeah, right? yeah. And, that's right. But you know, just the the way the calendar falls, and I think Mike's right because um, there's a tendency for not a lot of work to be done between Christmas and New Year's, and the second is a Thursday. Right. And in order to get an agenda out, it has to be out Thursday night. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it would be tight. Right. Yeah. It, it could be so very maybe tight. do we even just say well, 13th for I mean what do we have scheduled for yeah. the sixth? We already we have a couple of things already on that. Well the, they're scheduled for early January. Okay. Is more the point. Right. Well, you know, I guess I would Ask Carol and say, you know, how realistic is it that the agenda could be determined 
you know, sufficiently in advance so you're not under that time crunch of having to do a meeting's worth of preparation within one day mm -hmm. on Thursday the second. It depends on whether we have an uh, EDR and it depends on how an environmental design review special well, permit. Um, we, we have a... Who's the antenna? Yeah. Yeah. You have an antenna. When is that? One that's coming back to you for various reasons. It's not scheduled yet. It's okay. The it's been added. Okay. Mm -hmm. That doesn't go to the CBA now? Town Council had opined that amendments to special permits or amendments to any action, any formal action, have to go back to the original permitting board. Okay. This one in particular, you probably want to hear because there have been some concerns with the um, some uh, past violations with the property owner and so that for that reason the the <coughs> wireless carrier doesn't have control over those things but the standards the environmental design review standards you, you always check for compliance yeah. with zoning and compliance with you know that's one of the standards is everything has to be in order for this board to consider granting a permit. Mm -hmm. So okay. Makes sense. Uh, all right, so the sixth and the thirteenth. If the matrices, uh, just to get it back yeah. to answering your question, we'll be getting feedback from the board and working on just checking off which items still right. need to be um, addressed before the final certificate of occupancy. Right. Um, that doesn't seem like a lot of work, but... Well, okay. I mean, if you don't think that filling out the boxes is going to be, because you know it so well, like the back of your hands, maybe you're just going to go through this list and go, yep, 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 yep. Well, the ones, we won't be able to do anything about the ones, the staff won't be able to do anything to make, to get, Arlington 360 further along are the ones that they aren't there yet. Absolutely but, true. No, I, I just want to give you guys enough time to go through and say, okay, which one is this? Yeah, okay, let's just check. You know, that bond was paid. You know, this was done. Er everything, you know. It, I haven't looked through it. It came in this morning, and I was in meeting prison most of the morning. No, so, but absolutely. is it substantially different than um, past versions? No. Okay. All right. No, it's not. It's not, it just needs to get so there's not a lot of new... No. Okay. Just a lot of items. Yeah. And it's just ticking them off. And okay. Look, I'm not opposed to having the 6th and the 13th. Okay. As long as, as, long as people are... are I mean, the 13th... Wait. Did you say the 6th? I the said 13th? the 6th and the yeah. 13th okay. only so people keep their calendars open in case we yeah. can't we can't make it to the 6th in time. Mm -hmm. I can say, oh, wait, forget. Right, let's keep I'm going to cancel one of them. All right. <laughs> Let me put it this way. We'll, we'll plan for the 6th and the 13th, but one of them will be canceled. Sounds good. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. And then we've got a February 3rd. And I think that's fine. If we can get okay. all the work we need to do when done then. When do the warrant articles get discussed? At the 6th, at that meeting. At the 6th and the 3rd. Oh, you mean like the no, recommendations? No, or no language. Just the, no, just the which, the, the, which are they? I don't even know which ones we're recommending. The only thing we're doing is just the, or that we expect. There may be some citizen petition warrant right. articles, but the only formal town-sponsored warrant article that we're aware of is the medical marijuana okay. dispensaries. Right, and, and so actually we should probably discuss that for a second. So, so, because I'm kind of glossing over it. I think the kind of plan we had was unless something came up that during the master planning process, we wouldn't put forth any uh, zoning uh, bylaw articles. Obviously, anything that citizen petition or other people bring to the table, we have to take a look at and figure out whether we recommend or not. So those aside, the ones that we put forth yes. uh, as the Arlington Redevelopment Board, um, I'm a, I've been under the uh, I've been working under the assumption that because of the master plan, other than things that come up that yeah. need addressing, right. then we're going to leave it alone. It's so just the, medical the medical marijuana has come up. We need to address it. So mm -hmm. that's the one we need to. Do we to have focus. language for it yet? No, no. Okay. that's what we would probably work on. At the we'll work on that with yeah. So, okay. So, so that's what we're going to do on the sixth or the thirteenth. Okay. One of those two days. 
just going to look at it, or we're going to approve it. No, we're going to we're going to we're going to um, approve it to put it into the warrant. Yeah, just uh, so that's not the recommendation. Like it's it. not anything other than the placeholder in the little gray book that says, you know, to see uh, if the town. Uh, yeah, to see if the town will adopt a uh, zoning why, why for, wait? for recommendations. Andy wants to vote on it right now. Oh, right now. <laughs> cool. Just to put it into the warrant. Because you need the language. Oh, it does. We don't have it. That's right. Right. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. a lawyer, are the, you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely need the language. Well, well, the other thing it is, needs to be on the agenda. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 yeah that, that's an important one for the agenda. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I mean, just all kidding aside, I mean, technically, we've got to figure out, believe it or not, okay, do we need an article about signage as well as, you know, oh, right, zoning? Right. Do we need, you know, we've got to figure out exactly what, what's going to be effective. we got to crack this thing a little bit. Okay. What's going to be effective. Because, because the fear is, is you want to you keep it um, broad enough so that nothing's out of scope when you're talking right. about it. Right. Because so. yeah, it's here. It's okay. Other than that. We can keep this as is. Okay. Yeah, well, you're comfortable with So we'll just have January 6th and January 13th. Yeah. One of those will be a flex. And, uh, you know, we'll certainly tell you uh, by the second <laughs> uh, whether we're going to have one on the 16th or just on the 13th. Okay. Uh, sorry, the 6th or the 13th. And just so people know that the first few months here February, March, April, May, and June at least line up on the same week as the master plan meeting. So the Tuesday will be the ARB. So if anybody wants to go to a master plan meeting, it will be on the same week. That means you have two days of meetings every week. Are you going to be okay well, with that? Yeah. That's been happening what already. Do you I'm not happy about be it. Between that and my work yeah, schedule, I've got like meetings all the time. Right? Yeah. So if, just knowing when they are is good. <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll add a, a column for our purposes of when the master plan advisor that would be meeting be is on. Well, you just handed us this thing, right? Uh, yes, but um, Joe pointed out to me that that's um, missing the monthly deadline of the National Advisory Committee. I didn't see it. Yeah. 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 How the, I can see where how the working went. papers work, because that was kind of interesting when that was explained. Not everybody on the master plan committee understood that. Tried. <laughs> so, yeah. the, the existing conditions reports that have come out already are pretty much documenting what's existing right. in all these different categories, the land use, the transportation, all the right. different categories we have. So the, the working papers, which are going to be next, are not some independent segment now in each of those. There's not going to be just a land use working paper, a standalone working paper. It's going to take the existing conditions and take it, now, correct me if I'm wrong, take it now to the next level. Mm -hmm. So that we're. Issues, identify issues and opportunities and threats. Okay. So, say for land use in particular, if we take that one, it's going to now, these, this is our existing conditions for land use. Now we're going to look at some of the things that Andy was talking about today, is some of the opportunities for that land use, some of the changes that we want to make, some of the recommendations even. It's going so to the start recommendations to get into start that. to come in. It's in, going to start to get these? into that in the next level, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the working papers will go all the way to recommendations because that we're expecting to get from the committee. But it'll start to imply. They said it's not going to be just be facts. Vision. It's not going to be just facts like It'll the existing conditions are. Yeah, it's going to start to create a, a little bit of a things that they're going to point out that should be considered. Yeah, it's not going to give you a, a definite this way or that way, but issues are identified. Yeah. And it will start to, to make you think. Okay. That sounds good. So, is this the latest? Yes. No. No? How do you know? Doesn't have it doesn't have a date on it. It doesn't have a date on it. That, I doubt that includes the land use of natural resources. So right. a, is that available on the website? Some of them might keep going back. They're all on the website, yes. Oh. See, some oh, of these places. have. I've seen the data. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that must have been the first generation. There has only been one generation. This is the one you sent us. Yes. Yeah. Oh, then yeah. that is the. 
So this but, but, is, but it's missing the land use and natural resources. Oh, that's so, what you're saying. Two um, sections. We can either get you a hard copy of the land use and natural resources, or you can go to the website. Just go to the website. So we should yeah. comment on this. Yes, by, by, by if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> no, by the twentieth. By the twentieth. Oh, by the twentieth. Oh, 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 is that it? Oh. Yes, we would, and we, it was extended, actually. Okay, that's right. Now I heard that. <laughs> Specifically for you. I knew that. You know, and this is existing conditions, so you here. may not have that many comments on this. It's, you know, if Land use missing. is an important element. Do, do you want me to send you a PDF of the... If you have it handy, just uh, don't print it out. Just send me, yes, email me a PDF. If you think I should look at it. Yeah, I'll take a copy to you. We should all look at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should already have what Andy has in his right. hands. Okay. So you I'll just get you the natural resources and the land use. We'll have the next iteration, so to speak, when the working paper comes out. It'll blend some of this into the next. Right? It'll start to weave it together. I believe so. And that's, that's due December 30th. What's due December 30th? The land comments. use working paper is expected. No, comments, comments. The, the next, the, the first oh, land use working paper oh, I is expected. That's right on here. So that's oh, the I first see. one. Yeah. That's the first one then. Right. Oh, I see. It's going to be and then the, that goes up December 30th. It's not going to yes. need yeah. a response on December 30th. Um, I don't think minutes, I think minutes is the next thing. I don't think those made it around. I have oh, okay, great. Do it uh, real I have also have two other small items later for you. This is how we usually do it. You know, we're all in the same thing as I usually am, except I'm not looking over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Good. I agree. There's a few typos actually. That's the major there. Yeah, yeah I'll take care of anything. Um, anything. It's too great. Um, so, yeah, and this is the other piece for the January 27th. So, um, as far as the meetings are concerned, yet again, um, this because we need them to come back. Okay. So, that February 3rd meeting is probably where we should be asking yeah, tech. tech to come back. Okay. Um, February 3rd? Yeah, February 3rd, because I think it's a March date that we're working against for oh, that's right. yeah. for uh, using those mitigation funds. Mm -hmm. That's right. So um, I think we definitely want to make sure that we get them on the February 3rd agenda. So we you don't want to move it up to January. Oh, but we're no, no, no. losing the January 13th meeting. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And, and I, 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 I think they needed it until that January 27th, so okay. I think I think February 3rd should work for them. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And I, I think that will be enough time to plan for the mitigation, if that's what we want to do. You know, and, and, and get the request in for the funds. Okay. So. Um, okay, so any other comments? I move to approve the minutes of the December 2nd, 2013 meeting. Second. Any seconds? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Carol, you had a couple other things. Right. Um, Citizen Bank and Heights wants to change their signage very slightly. They are not increasing the size of the signs. They're not changing the location or number of their signs. Joey um, thought that there may have been a time a couple years ago where the board authorized the director to um, okay that type of sign change. I can't remember if I did that with this board or a prior board. <laughs> but the question is, Joey asked if this is something that could be approved administratively or if you want to see it. The, um, there's an internally illuminated standing sign and uh, it will be internally illuminated. They're reducing it in size a little bit, she thinks. If you would like to have them go for an amendment, they can do that. Uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where you might want to look at the application, but uh, it's. I can certainly say that I'm you fine can't with even staff. Really tell. If it's the same size, if it's you know the same number, it, similar content, it's similar, similar sign content. type. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the lighting isn't changing. Yeah, absolutely. Colors aren't that's <coughs> that's yeah, something that staff. Colors aren't changing. But I would expect staff to yeah. to be able not yeah. only to handle I, it better. I, than I, us. I have a vivid recollection that we might have done this. It does seem familiar. And I'm trying right, to remember I'll go back which. Do you think it's familiar to No, I think it? we tried to do it. We tried to establish it as a. As a oh, okay. And we, we couldn't get that through somehow. Oh, yeah, actually, that sounds familiar. But I think, you know, if Mike is the chairman and you talk, and uh, it's, yes. it doesn't raise itself to the level. Oh, it wasn't a unanimous decision. Yeah. Or it didn't come before. Yes, I think. Uh, do you want to vote, or, or do you do you want to vote to that regard, or are you comfortable with us it's saying that? better. Fine. I mean, since you're convened, you're then let's say. Um, but to vote to, to allow Mike and you to make the call is that on most, this particular case? Yeah, in other words, it should that's probably pass under your eyes, that's so fine. you know that that it's. That's fine. And then, if yeah, folks are comfortable so, with that, that's fine. With me. Yeah. So. Uh, I'll move that uh, the chairman uh, shall have the authority to review the proposed sign changes for the Citizens Bank location in the Heights and authorize the director of planning to uh, permit the alterations in her discretion. Second. All in favor? Bye. Uh, I think so. I'm not sure I can say it again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I do have it. Seconded, please. Uh, I think Andy did. Thanks. All right. And the other item is uh, when you uh, hear about the Millbrook District and there are some public access points on private property. Over time, I think some have been conferred by special permits. They're lost to general awareness because they're not, they can be lost to general awareness uh, because the, the committee, I mean the board composition that approved that special permit changes. Right. So I would like you to give thought in the future to requiring if public access, permanent public access, is a condition of the grant of special permit, I'd ask you to consider having it done as an easement, a permanent easement, because that, you won't have to worry about the will or the willpower or intention or culture of a future board in enforcing that, or a future zoning enforcement officer enforcing that. 
It'll be in the deed. How does that work? How, uh, can we do that through the special permit process? Did we do Require it? it? We did it at uh, Alta, right? No, you didn't. I wanted you to, but it, um, it, the board was persuaded that having it as a special permit, which is required, as a special permit required. condition, which is that's recorded in the deed, is sufficient. But it's they didn't want an easement. Nobody wants an easement. Want no one wants an easement. But if you're saying to this board that we're going to grant permanent mm -hmm. access. I think, in practice, you're kind of hoping it's going to go away after a while. I think the applicant is hoping yeah. that for future mm -hmm. successor, right. successors to title, I think they're hoping that it will diminish. Unless you're making an easement. Unless you're making an easement. And you're talking about which projects, or few, any project? Any that come to you where the proponent is offering, is saying, as part of this, Great development. Right. We'll provide public access across or the site to the for parking this. park. Yeah. Or we'll parking provide for yeah, yeah, any anything yeah. that they're coming to you and saying it's part of this special uh, it's this development, this environmental design review. The big ones where you're gonna hear that, it, it'll be worth it because it's like a once every fifty year type of development. So So practically speaking though, can I'm just trying to figure out the, the practicality of it. We, we, can, we, can we say, and we want it to be an easement? Or, I mean, how does, the, I just don't understand that part of. Legally, can we say Yeah, that? yeah, real estate law, where, that, that, where that comes from. Well, it's there, got to, I mean, unless you're taking the easement by eminent domain, it has to be a grant by yeah, the, they have by the grant. Okay, yeah. so they have to grant but it. Yeah. at least just have a conversation. Yeah. They can sure. refuse it, I guess. Yeah. That's, okay, but that's what I'm saying. They can refuse it, and maybe there's... I think, I think it's worth pushing it. Oh, you could take it by an, an easement by eminent domain, okay. too. Yeah, I, I guess... The, it, you have the, to pay the, the value. Of the value for right. that, that um, not, not the complete fee. But what's value. what's the difference right. in value if you get you're getting the same thing by a special permit? You know what I mean? If you're giving up the same thing by a special permit, what's a diminution in value if you put an easement in there? Do you, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, can they make the argument? Can can you make the argument? The town could make the argument. That's what I mean. The, the town were ready to argument. give it as special part of a special permit. Not only were you so willing to, you but that was part attached to great amount of value, value to, to it. it. Exactly. To, to give it. Yeah. Or you think we're going to forget about it in 10 years? Yeah, yeah, because why are you... No, <laughs> I think it's very point. interesting. I'll be curious to see how it works practically. Yeah, no, I, I think it would be interesting also just to... I mean, you, from your experience in other communities, had used the easement approach. I think if it's permanent, you, you, I, I know it's used. And we also, we have a land trust now, so you have a body that can control uh, okay. and enforce and monitor that. You don't have the okay, ability that, to monitor that's a, and enforce maybe that's, maybe that's the what I was public more interested in. access yeah. special permit conditions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You don't, you don't have the, the, the capacity. Um, you could, the, if you choose, a, a member of the, the, the board chose to do that and the board acted on that formally as a body. You could do that. Mm -hmm. But two years from now, 12 years from now, you might have a board that's like, that's not that important. That's, that's private property. That's you could have a, a a whole culture change. So it's harder when it rests with the board or with the relationship between the board and the zoning enforcement officer. If it's something that's monitored annually. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I think that was more my question: is who holds the easement? And now we now that you mentioned the land trust, that makes well, more sense. Or the town. Or the town. The town can't hold. Well, if, it, if it's conveyed to the town. Yeah, because, I mean, that's the way a lot of, um, uh, you know, private ways where the town didn't actually, I mean, the town will, you know, hold the easement for the use of the way, and, mm -hmm. and the fee would still be in the private property owner. But um, the, I think the other advantage, so it's just as you were talking, Carol, of using the easement approach is you could have a private property owner 20 or 30 years down the line say, you know, this project just doesn't make any sense for us anymore, and we're going to redevelop it. We're going to come in and go for a new special permit oh, for a complete true. new use yeah. and forget about redesign the whole plan, yeah. right? And public access doesn't make any sense to us anymore. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so then, now you're dependent upon future generations of ARB members yeah. to recall or revive that interest, that public interest in that development. Mm -hmm. And how do you impose that on the new owner? The special permit runs with the land, but yeah. what if there's, for example, at Alder Brigham's, there's a diagonal supposed access from the park, I mean, from the Minuteman Park Path to the Market Park. What if the redevelopment from a future developer in 20 or 30, 40 years can't Proceed with that diagonal access. Well, maybe there's another. Well, but the, there might be another one. But that's right. Overlay district, district. But but easements can also be relocated too. So um, you know, it, it, they can't be done away with. But the burdened property can say, you know, it doesn't make any sense to have that conduit going through this part of the property anymore, or this access here. So I'm just going to move it to a different place. So. So it's something that, you know, we're not going, I don't, I wanted to bring it up. Yeah, I don't yeah no, I think it's interesting. Uh, it's interesting. necessarily feel obligated to solve it and have it all figured out for the next time you have to be on it. But um, if something does come to you, let's try to remember the conversation and we can get um, right. council to advise. Mm -hmm. no, I think that makes sense. See if we can do it. Great. Well, thank you. I think okay. uh, there's one more motion. Oh, Christine was the maker. Oh, I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.